drag it because while you, Amy, are the reason that uh, you know Vosh did a hour long take that video of this shit, I think it would behoove us to uh, find it. So let's uh, indulge me, shall we? Let me just uh, go like this. Over. Can you still see? Yeah, you can. Cool. Let's watch this and just... Oh, Lord. I really believe this to be true, and today I want to share some of the habits I've cultivated to get to a net worth of over a million dollars by age 29. Habits that made me a millionaire by age 29. It's... Honestly, it's not fucking 1950 anymore. Y y no amount... Like, maybe, like, back in, like, Maybe Amy back in, like, I don't know about you, but, like, back in the 50s or 60s, maybe you could, you know, have, like, habits of saving money that would result in you having a million dollars after 20-some years. Like, that, like, just by, like... Six steps to get you out of... These <laughs> comments. Oh, Lord. But, I don't know. Jesus. And also, what is with like? I just don't understand. Like, if 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 if, if Vush is going to be talking about like attire and fashion and stuff, I want to just slow. I just want to pick apart the interior design choices of people's fucking houses and shit. Oh, that's what he does during this video. He picks apart her set choices. He picks apart her clothing choices. You fucking name it. He drags her. He fucking drags her. Like <laughs> Shall we drag her shall we drag her together, Amy? I'll tag when I post this I, I'm recording this, so when I post this as a highlight, I'll tag your channel. <laughs> I think I hit it technically around 27 or 28, but I'm 29 now, so we're going with that. Once you develop good habits, it's almost effortless to continue them. I don't say the net worth number to brag, it's really just to give some credibility. You know, if I've done it, I feel like you can also do it. I'm, and I'm not selling a course or anything like that. These are just some things I've learned. So let's get into it. So the first habit that I really feel has helped me in my I journey to becoming the a the people that are answering, uh, asking like sincere questions that will produce videos. And if she actually did the videos to answer any of these questions, oh God, it would be great to watch her brain break on camera. <laughs> when she tries to realize that, oh, I couldn't have done any of this if my parents weren't married, white, and wealthy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, her, then... her dad was a basketball high school coach and a high school history teacher. That's what he was? In Washington, I believe. In Washington. At a big school, I do believe. Oh, so it's like so oh, it wasn't it? like he was. Uh, I don't remember the school, but um, basically, uh, you, you can go back into their channel a uh, distance. Uh, it has stuff from when she uh, streamed with her sister when she was like a teenager. Um, she is from money. Oh, oh boy. All right. Let's let's is this this is a nine minute video. We we're only thirty five seconds in. This is gonna hurt. Oh my god, the people trying to uh get uh into her spirit uh Oh boy. Let's continue, shall we? Millionaire sure. is aligning the time that I work with the time that I have the most energy. This is a fancy way so of saying I wake up early and I work early because that is when I have the most energy. Every morning I make my coffee and then I go straight to my laptop and get started working. I don't do a crazy morning routine. I literally work is the morning routine. I get straight to it because for me personally, that is when my mind is fresh and ready to go. And I actually kind of have the most motivation to work. I never schedule calls or appointments in this time. The first three hours of the day are dedicated to working because I know for me, once it hits about 2 p.m., my mind's not as sharp, I'm feeling tired, my work quality is just not as good. I also- Well, that's actually a true thing. Like once you have lunch and like the human bodies are actually supposed to like take an, like, an hour or two yeah, yeah. at noon. 
Like, yeah. The, like as yeah. as much as much as like we we can dunk on the Spaniards for having siesta and shit, it's actually mm-hmm. like better. For a good idea. Yeah. 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 So like no no shade to her in this regard like this like this isn't a, mm-hmm. an advice like this isn't a, a, like a piece of advice that was gonna make you a millionaire but it is a it's not a terrible piece of life advice like, get your work done in the morning take it easy in the afternoon and evening uh, I don't know. Like the feeling of momentum I get from this, getting something important done before 9 a.m. just makes me feel better about the day and like I really can get a lot done. But this doesn't necessarily mean that one you of have Trump's to wake allies up early. wants to are... execute Democrats, you say. I'm not surprised. They're they they they, they like they've been mask off since 20, 20, 2019 actually very productive and much more oh, creative more very yeah. late at night personally couldn't Jeez, be me i don't want to do shit at night but if that is when you have the most energy and creativity just make sure you're blocking out that time for focused work really like make that a sacred time for getting shit done like the next these are really- solid tips if your life is already thus that you have this kind of freedom yeah like i like this like, these are great creator tips, but they're not tips on how to be a millionaire if you're not a millionaire. Yeah, this is uh this this shit isn't going to get me in part in, out of the hell house we're currently right. in. Like this isn't gonna get me this isn't gonna get me, you know, out of out of debt. This isn't gonna get me like into a like a, a job to like yeah, it's just it's it's not, it's not anything, it's not substantial, it's like, it's, it's, a, it's like, like, yeah, like, this is the type of shit that you would hear that a, um, life coach would, will, will say, as, like, an honest, like, things you should do to improve your life, as just petered in with the extra bullshit, just as kind of, that you're supposed to t- interpret yourself, you know, it's just, it's, you know what I really want to see? What do you want to see? David Pakman, big Bosch. I don't think that I don't think that David I don't I don't think that Vosh would necess, I don't think Vosh would go for it and I don't think David Packman would go for it. No, because, neither of them would go for it. Because by and large they agree they don't they don't about don't most think, things, yeah. They disagree they don't disagree they agree about most things and I think the disagreement is where like the steps forward are in a they're in agreement where uh where like at once the work where the work ends is i think the discrepancy i think i think you know uh david pacman wants a sort of some mm-hmm. level of uh social democracy kind of you know like strong welfare state with you know you know strong unions and all that stuff you know, in, in strong regulations, and mm-hmm. Vosh is ultimately a proponent of an entirely different system. So it's like he wants to go, he wants to get go past that social democracy. It, it, it's a ban, it's a band aid that needs to be healed and all that. And that front. So I don't think they would disagree with any of like this. I think it would be a very philosophical debate, which yeah. ultimately, and that's they, kind of why I would want it. Right. Though, but, honestly, is because I think that would be very handy for a lot of people who are on the center left to see a liberal get into an argument with someone who is so liberal. intellectually superior, like league superior, like would make Pacman look like a kindergartner. I don't think I don't think I don't think Pacman. He is got such a shallow progressivism. Understand, this is the same guy that only recently was even comfortable using the G word referring to what Israel is doing to Gaza. Oh, yeah, so he's like a, oh, so he's like a total shitlord. Yeah, he's, 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 he's a shit lived through and through. He, uh, like, yeah, um, yeah, no, nah, he, there's, there's not much daylight uh, between his views and that of any neo-lib on the right. Oh, let's continue, shall we? I'm sure. So I'm curious to see what the next helped me increase my net worth was regularly investing, and I don't mean in day trading or something yeah. like this. It's just for the visual. Regularly investing, I mean, you regularly know. Regularly investing in stocks, real estate. Only a few hundred thousand. 
Can I can I just say to anybody who might watch this, like if you are a person who isn't, you know, obscenely wealthy, what you should actually do as an investment? Series I treasury bonds. Yeah. You pay Treasury you pay bonds, three month CDs, uh one month CDs, nine month CDs, yeah. Uh it, 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 I, it, it, I I actually uh I, I had a buddy several years ago um, who was a computer developer in the days of when you had to know how to actually write code. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, he worked at Lowe's in the part-time for spending money because what he did with his full-time job was his full-time job would hit his bank account and pay for his basic bills like car payment, insurance, shit like that. Yep. And then the rest of it would be split up between a one month CD, a three month CD, and a nine month CD, and a twelve month CD. Uh, uh. And he would like roll the one into the three, three into the nine, nine into the twelve. Please define a CD for the audience. Also for me too. I don't know what a CD is. Oh, uh, it's a, it's a, um, I don't know what the fuck it stands for. To be quite honest, uh, it is a, a savings bond, um, savings CD. And 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 just to be clear, the reason I say a Series I bond for everybody is because, um, when you buy a Series I bond, you buy it for the full value. So if you buy a fifty dollars Series I bond, that bond is worth fifty. Is now certificate of deposit. Got it. Uh, that Series um, I that here, Series I bond is now worth fifty dollars. And so, the, and from the moment that you have purchased it, it is it starts accruing interest at whatever the current interest rate is, plus two fifty percent. So if the current so, interest, if the current interest rate is like or one fifty, if the current interest rate is like two percent, that means that that bond is accruing at two three and a half percent. And the reason why I suggest that is because if you, the, 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 if you make you just the Series I bonds on average will have a higher um, interest rate, and B, even if it's not a Series I bond, make sure that whatever bond you do buy. You pay for the full amount, like the what the what it says on the tin up front. And the reason why I say that is because my parents sent me a bunch of war bonds and shit from the early two thousands that they that were given as gifts back when people still did that. And I cashed them, and I had one Series I bond worth that was bought for seventy five dollars, and I had, and literally the other thirty to forty other bonds were like fifty dollars, sixty dollars, a hundred dollars, seventy dollars, whatever. But they were they're they're a series double E. And the diff and here's the distinction: series double E bonds are bought for half the price of what they are their stated value is, and it takes at in in and they only and and it takes like something like twenty years for them to get to the value that they say on the tin. Now I cash these all of these bonds in after I had. You know, it, after twenty some years had passed, right? Like, you know, like it was like it was like 90, 98, 99, 0, 2000, 01, war bond, oh one, war bond, oh one, two thousand two, two thousand three, so on, so forth. And you want to know what the series I bond was worth? It was bought for seventy five dollars. That shit was damn near three hundred dollars. Now, granted, this was bought at a seven percent inch. This would had a seven percent interest rate. There's a good uh, uh, image showing the difference between savings bonds and certificates of deposits or CDs. Yeah, let me pull those up for you. Pull those up real quick. Uh, open, open link. Yeah, savings bond cannot be cashed in during the first year, and cashing in before five years incurs a penalty. Series E has a fixed interest rate, and the Series I have both fixed and variable interest rates. No state or local taxes assess. Series E and I may qualify for education tax exclusion. CDs have a penalty for early withdrawal. 
Rates offered by, at any t given time are tied to the current prime rate. Taxable at both state and federal level can be bought for a term as short as one month and as long as 10 weeks. Still so the up. reason he did that was so that he had a regularly growing savings for emergency costs and stuff like that. Um, and the idea of doing that is uh, like... Well, you know, in the early 2000s, you could make $8 an hour, and that was good money. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. remember filling up my car, filling up my car for $13. Oh, that's be nice. Filling. Filling. That don't exist anywhere now. Unless you're filling a motorcycle. <laughs> Back then, filling a motorcycle was two bucks. <sighs> uh, they took... They took boomers uh, and Gen X took our future from us. Yep. At least... Hey, at least I was never an adult. What? At least I'm young enough that I was never an adult and able to experience those types of things it's always been shit for me now granted the difference between being an adult yeah. in 2018 2019 versus like now in terms of like how everything costs yeah that's a little fucking different but i digress but let's continue. yeah let's 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 watch some ideas now in the beginning if you're not making a lot of money investing yeah, in that. business ideas or things that can make you more active The phrase takes money to make money comes to mind. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If income is where it's at. For example, you can invest in equipment to start a mobile spray tan business. I've also seen people do mobile bar businesses. So for me, in the beginning, that was invest. That mobile bar business. So what you're saying is start an illegal bar. Start. No. Start, start a fuck. No, 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 no. Start a fucking. Not, uh, not illegal. Not illegal by any means. I guarantee you she got a liquor license for it. I'm just like, I'm like, it's 2024. Like, I'm pretty sure we don't need to have, have like, an on-the-go speakeasy. Uh, we, uh, all over Pittsburgh, there are these, uh, bars that you get on, and if you want, you can pedal. You don't have to pedal. Uh, but there's a guy that guides it, and... You go around uh, with your friends and tour the city while uh, drinking beers. It's actually really neat. Cool. I, 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 I rather like the idea, um, mostly because I like beer. And yeah. Uh, yeah, that seems like a neat way to enjoy beer. Makes sense in a camera and a laptop so that I could make a YouTube channel. Then as I've earned yeah. money from my- Yeah, look at that camera, buddy. Look at that camera. Jesus fucking Christ. How much you think that costs? At least 12. At least 12. The dinky ass GoPro I have that I use for, uh, you know, the that I use for the talk screen, like here, this shit, this was a $600 camera when I bought it. Uh-huh. Like, just everything she has is, like, top of the line. It's like, honey, the only way you do this is if you come from money. Or if you like me and you use your student loans on it. One or the other. I should really call my student loan provider. Ah. Nah, don't worry about that. They can, get, they can rip that and take that from the cold dead port. Yeah. It's just I need them to give me more money. Yeah. From my YouTube channel, I've regularly invested it into the stock market. So this is one of my brokerage going accounts. Back for business. Oh, word. Oh, oh, so you reinvest your YouTube earnings? You don't make a living off this shit? Oh, word? So that, so you're just reinvesting it in your fucking brokerage account? So what you're telling me is that, like... Oh, uh, my do you remember that epidemic of like grown ass men randomly assaulting women in New York?
I don't. I, I'm not condoning it, but I'm just saying, like, if you want to, like, if like, like, you know what? I'm not gonna say anything that could, could that could uh, vilify <sighs> me in court of law. Never mind. There you go. Don't fed post. No fed posting. A few different ones. You can see this account made a 24% return in the past year. So that's an additional $28,000 just made completely passively. It's super important to get into the habit of doing this every month or else you will just never do it. The best habit is just every time you get paid, set aside a certain percentage to investing in stocks. Eventually, I was able to invest in real estate and that has definitely helped increase my net worth as yeah, well. Yeah, she's but a landlord. at that point yet, that's totally... Like, here's the thing, you, of course, like, yeah, you're probably a fucking millionaire if you're a landlord. Not because, um, not because, like, the, the property itself is worth a million dollars, but, like, to be in that type of position, you gotta be rich. Yeah. Like, you're not gonna be a hundred thousand <laughs> there and, like, have a whole-ass separate house. Really fine. Okay. Investing in stocks yep. sometimes yeah. makes a better return than real estate anyway. And it's way more passive, way less headaches. Like, I kind of like it better. The important thing is making the habit of it and doing it every month. You hear about those high earners who are living paycheck to paycheck. Really, actually, wealthy people don't spend all their money on stupid shit, okay? They reinvest the vast majority of it. They might spend... That sounds like a miserable existence. Doesn't it sound miserable to you? No, oh, like, no, she does not sound happy at all. No, she doesn't look all. happy. She looks stressed. She looks like she's what? She's yeah. twenty nine. She looks older than twenty nine. Mm hmm. A little bit on unnecessary things. I definitely spend my fair share on things I don't really need, but the majority. I reinvest. I don't know any rich person that doesn't invest in some way, so you've got to be doing it. The next habit was actually taking more calculated risks. If you don't take... I don't know any rich person that doesn't steal anyone's labor, so you got to do it. It's basically hey. what she just said. Hey. Hey. What's up? You take a risk, Ms. Vlogger Lady. Right? What's the worst thing that happens to you if you fuck up? You become a worker. You get a real job. Right. What happens? What happens if to a normal person? Just so you know, you're peaking your mic. I know. Sorry. What happens to a normal person when you they take a ca that same calculated risk and they fuck up mm -hmm. they turn into me they turn into me oh here's the best part her idea of risk is not the same uh as most people's idea of risk uh i can't wait to hear this take shit. any risks it will oh, take yeah. you forever to become also, a millionaire like also also <laughs> criticism your uh your time codes are fucked up you're not you're they're not you didn't you didn't do it properly you you starting whole segments before they're supposed to start so now when somebody switches to have it before they completely miss <laughs> am it. i gonna kick off a whole fucking leftist content uh drag of this woman <laughs> hey i'm happy to contribute sure you can do it slowly but if you want to do it by my age you do have to take some risks. But this doesn't mean that you have to do it blindly or at random. Whenever I am considering spending some money or investing into something, I research as much as I can and try and run the numbers. But the fact of the matter is you don't always have all the information. You know, some of it's kind of gate kept. A lot of times you can't find all the information, but I find when I do I'll take a calculated like risk, you. a lot of the time it works out and I end up making yeah. much, much more that would cover the losses from other risks even with making YouTube videos, for example. Why don't you just go to a casino? Right. Like, you're gambling at that point. Oh my god! The What's name up? of this player in here. Bent Wait. Baby. Dutch Baby? Bent Baby. Like, fentanyl. Oh. <laughs> Just, just to be clear for everybody listening, Amy's currently playing League of Legends while uh, we're watching this. Yes, she is one of them. 
example, most videos I'm putting some money into. For example, the Smart Sweets video that I did, I spent about $1,000 producing that one and it ended up getting a million views and making me 5,000. And I remember- Yeah, yes. so, yes. yeah, so yeah, again, again This that. is her idea of risk. Doing her job is her idea of risk. Subscribe to High Media TV, y'all. <laughs> a dollar a month is a boom to my mental health. <laughs> yes, I'm doing a, a a a I need money plug in the middle of this. I am very poor. Jesus Christ, this is just I hate I hate I hate her. I hate this. I remember being like, I don't know if this video is going to do oh. well, but I really think it has a good shot, so I'm willing to take the risk. But there are other times where it doesn't work out. This video about the electric boat, it didn't do very well. It only made $217. And I'm pretty sure I paid the videographer that helped me like $200. And I spent like 25 hours of my own time editing it. Sometimes oh, they don't pay poor off. Fucking but when they baby. do pay off, boy, do they. But you do have to take those risks. I spent that, I spent hours editing it. Yeah, shut up. If no, she doesn't spend hours editing. That's the greatest part. Look at it. Watch it. Her. Watch However, this closely. Yeah, jump. Like cut, that cut, cut right there. Yeah. It's AI. She uses AI for everything. AI for her setting, AI for her background, AI for her script, AI for her cutting. How do you know? Look in her description. Where does it, uh... At the bottom, it should say something about, uh, Edge AI or Glint AI. Notify account, Snapchat, LinkedIn. Transcript. So, did you... Oh, I guess it's not showing up on my... On desktop for me, but... Huh, weird. That's yeah. weird. So it's, okay, so it's, maybe that one video is not, but... Almost every other video she had was. Jesus. I do think it's wise to research yeah. things as much as you can so that it's not a 50-50 chance. It's more of like an 80-20. As someone who is naturally kind of risk averse, this is a habit I've had to push myself into. But if I can do it, then you can do it. The next habit is exercising. Even though exercise doesn't directly make you money, exercising is what's known as a keystone habit. We're back to bullshit wellness guru shit. <laughs> advice. Which has a positive ripple effect on other areas of your life. People that regularly exercise are more likely to be productive and eat healthier as well. There's studies on this, sure. and honestly, I'm a case yeah, study. I find that when I'm done with a workout, I crave healthier foods and I want to be productive. It also kind of proves to yourself that you can do difficult things. If you can do a difficult workout, it makes you feel like you can conquer anything in your day. Exercise. God, she's built like a Nepo baby. Exercising has a huge mm -hmm. impact on your mood. Sometimes I will be stressed about a project and kind of pessimistic about it, but while I'm on, say, a run, I actually can't think negatively about it. It's like my brain only thinks positively while I'm running. So while exercise doesn't directly make you money, I think it can have a very powerful effect on your entire life that ends up making you more money. The next habit I really think you've got to master if you want to have a high net worth is being good at failing. I know you're probably like, no, Shelby, I want to succeed though, but hear me out. Everyone who has made money, who has had a successful business, has had quite a few previous unsuccessful businesses before that. Even Walt Disney, apparently his first cartoon studio, Laugh-A-Gram Studios, went bankrupt. Then he moved to LA to become an actor. That didn't really work out. He kept going though, and eventually he did have a lot of successful feature films, and of course, Disneyland. I he was also a giant anti-Semite. Just for the folks in the office. Also, I, also I, I'm... 100% cool perpetuating the myth that he, his head is stored underneath Disney. 
Yeah. Myself, I've what? had a ton of videos that have flopped. Walt I've Disney. tried different business what? things. His head stored underneath Disneyland cryogenical <laughs> To save his genius for future generations when their technology exists that would even be able to be used. Ah! One problem is that we've learned uh, that the gut plays an important uh, part in brain health, so that won't be possible unless he stored his gut along with it. Oh, I mean, true. And, I don't know, is that some fucking cyberpunk like 40k fucking yeah company. true i, I, I heard yeah, just like, like it's now using you know like petri dish human brains as processors yeah yeah organoids uh yeah yes it's fucking awesome dude yeah, they, that, yeah, that, shit that shit is gonna pave the fucking way to agi because it is so much more uh like power efficient Here's an API hook. Use Python to get this human brain to like calculate bullshit for you. What? I don't know. That's just. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's every day, like the news cycle makes me want to log off. That didn't really work out. But at the end of the day, none of those losses really matter and you forget it once you have something that actually works. It can be very disheartening if you put a lot of time or money into something and it doesn't do as well as you hoped. But the fact of the matter is that happens to everyone and it's a matter of just being per- I don't like, I, don't, I, I generally, genuinely do not like the idea of like, critiquing a, a, a person's looks to be mean especially like a woman i don't know like it feels misogynistic but yeah. like there's just there's just something Talking about, about the, nose. There, there's just something about the lines on her cheek coming down from her nose to her mouth that just, like on a on a, a phrenologic level make me feel like she shouldn't be trusted yeah she, she's it's like it's just I, I see this I, I see this exact kind of phrenology among lead brain Gen X women mm -hmm. without an ounce of love in their hearts. And I don't think no, I don't think I'm right. This is just a gut. Oh, by the way, launchables have lead in them. I learned about that the other day. You know what? I think that explains all my memory issues. Consistent, dusting yourself yeah. off. Yeah, do you eat a lot of Lunchables? I did eat a lot of Lunchables. Yeah, Lexi eats a lot of Lunchables. Huh? I hope she stops, goddamn. Yeah, like, like, yeah, like, yeah. like, yeah. like, I hope like, she stops too, that's why I shared the video with her. <laughs> Meadow, Meadow, my girlfriend, just for this one. My Me Meadow, like, can't do, like, joke, like, jokes. Like, I saw, I sent her a funny joke saying, wouldn't it be so, like, this is so funny. It was a guy who basically like set up Uno in his bed with his girl, and put a hand, uh, a hand in her hand, and so, and it was like, "Wake up, babe! We're, 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 it's your turn!" And just like, "Oh <laughs> yes, I want to do that to fucking uh, Aurora, but I want to do it with Magic the Gathering." And I've thought about literally learning how to play Magic just so I can pull that off. Yeah, and, 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 and here's the thing, it's like, I, I thought it was funny, and I shared it with Meadow, and it's like, I wouldn't be able to do that to you, like, you, 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 you like, you're too, you're too smart, and, and she, and I, and I, and she said, I think, I think it'd be funny if you, like, did, like, a joke like that to me, and then she says, no, I can't, and I'm like, why can't you do that, hon, and she says, because you have genuine memory issues, and I need you to trust me. <laughs> I love her so much. Oh Lord, this is yes. Yeah, seven minutes in, thirty-four minute video. Jesus H Christ. Learning from it and keeping going. It's really a mindset thing, and it's not automatic for most people. Like you really have to work to reframe things and cultivate this mindset. I really think failing at things is part of the process, and the better that you can get with it, the more comfortable that you can get with it, the more you're gonna push yourself and learn from it. It's just a sign that you're out there trying. Most people who are successful are just really persistent and good at failing, good at chipping away at something until they're good at it. This is one 
I always gotta constantly remind myself of though because I'll, I'll admit it still stings if a video doesn't do that well. And then maybe if you put actual effort into it and didn't just use the AI, it would do better. I'm just saying. Number one habit that really helped me grow my net worth. Have look, I look at this. Look at this shit in the background, dude. Like, why is mm -hmm. What is this? Ha like, why does everything have to be off, like, eggshell or beige? Why does everything have to be eggshell or beige? Like, I, 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 you know what I fucking want? You know what I? I, I want, I want fucking Hal's room from Hal's Moving Castle. I want this shit. I want this shit. I want, You're I fine. Want... I'm playing Arena right now, you and can... Arena is like the sweatiest play the uh, play league. So yeah, yeah. I like like you've <sighs> seen House Moving Castle, right? Uh, what is that? Studio Ghibli movie. No. Ah, well, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll show you in later. But uh, this is the shit I want. Like just colors and things on the wall and just everything everywhere all the time. Like I loathe this sad ass beige I view where the place I live as an asset and I'm ready to and, and I want to flip and if I have to flip it at a moment, moment's notice because I found a better place I like like can we just get, bring back the idea of like when you buy a home it's your home like I I I I, I want I would love it if we could if our if our policy around home ownership could make home ownership a much more permanent thing like make it much make it more difficult for like you know banks to foreclose on your houses and shit especially when there's microeconomic things that are outside of your control and also make it so much more difficult for individuals and companies to own more than one piece of property or oh shoot that's um, that's just, I just I hate I hate I loathe the idea. I just loathe like the concept that we currently have of housing being like a commodity and not something that you hold on to for the rest of your, for, for most of your life. Having a bias towards action. This means you have. What the fuck does having a bias towards? She'll explain. Let's see, like what this. An is. idea for something, you take action pretty much immediately. You don't have to have. Oh no! An 18 wheeler is about to hit me! Let me contemplate about which direction I want to dive to safety. Wait, oh what's going no! On? I got hit by an 18 wheeler! I. I shouldn't have been. I shouldn't have had a bias towards action. Look at this shit. Doesn't do that well. And the number one habit that really helped me grow my net worth, having a bias towards action. This means you have an idea for something, you take action pretty much immediately. You don't have- Wow. Also, can I just say that this piece of advice only fucking works if you have the money to back it up. Because you know what I do? Whenever mm -hmm. I have an idea for a video, within a, with a, within three hours, that shit is either in the process of being made, or I have, or I, I um, or I start making it. Every fucking video that I like, every idea that I have, I always, at the very least, try do a test run. For it, right. I have an idea for a daily vlog thing I want called Babble Box. I have that right. I have the thumbnail, the branding, the the YouTube like video template for it all ready to go. Just haven't started it yet because I don't mm -hmm. feel like I, I, I want to prove to myself that I can do nerd news, high media TV news update in the, in the rest of my podcast and keep those going on time on time. Like, like, this is a perfectly good 
piece of advice. That this isn't like the, the bottom line is here. You need mine. The bottom line, like the, like. Uh, I I just I I want to hear how she takes this incredibly benign concept and is able to extrapolate on it for at least a minute and a half. To heavily invest from the start, if you need to do some more research, that's okay, but at least take some actionable step. An example of a time I did this, I was at a sports bar with some friends, and an ad for that fitness mirror product came. What? Never mind, I'm not gonna say it. Came on the TV, I ordered it immediately. I knew, I was like, this is gonna be a good video. And it actually ended up doing really well. There have been other times where I have a good video idea and I really put off ordering the product or reaching out to the company. Like, I'm telling you, do it immediately. If you think about something for too long, a lot of times you will just talk yourself out of it. If you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, make the account today. Record something today. You don't have to go out and buy expensive equipment today, but you can get started today. Whatever it is, just having that bias towards action, I think is so important. And it just gives you more chances of being successful at something, you know? Where's my fucking success, Shelly? Oh... So anytime I'm starting to procrastinate something, I'll just do the five minute rule. I'll set a five minute timer. Tell myself I'm just gonna do the thing for five minutes. Almost every time I end up doing it for a lot longer and I end up feeling so good about the fact that I got started. You have some momentum now and it's easy to keep going. It's really motivating the next day to pick up. I, I'm sorry, Amy. I don't think I have it in me to sit through the next 45 seconds of this video. <laughs> I know we're almost done. There are 45 seconds left here. But <laughs> I I'm just I would rather read Dianetics to a group of angry Christians with a cactus Stuck up my ass. <laughs> I am choosing self-love. I am choosing to prioritize what's left of my emotional well-being. <laughs> I'm disliking this video. Think... I think I need. That's why you should have watched Bosch's version. It would have at least made you laugh. So, uh, I, I just. I know. So you said her dad was a fucking, you know. High school coach and teacher, but a coach at like one of those schools where like high school like sports is like a, a fuck off amount part of the budget and like in the sports yeah te teachers yeah like, probably like, that's that that's 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 literally what their life looked like yes it did not look like they were the rundown high school uh, coach it looked like they uh, you know they had some money they had some money yeah. Well, here's how I know her dad made money, right? Guess what her mom's job was. What's that? Stay at home mom. Yeah, oh yeah, they had money. Yeah, they had fucking money. She experienced a childhood. I venture to guess 70% of American kids do not have. I would wager she experienced a childhood that I'd say 90% of the people in my generation haven't. Maybe more. I think you underestimate how many rich people there are in your generation. In my generation? Yeah, there's a lot of children that were, uh, um, 
if I recall correctly, Gen Z's like um because mostly millennials and Gen X only had kids if they had money. So like Gen Z wouldn't be born to that many poor people compared to previous generations. That's a good point. That's a good point. But even then, like you know, even, like having money enough money to like not have a to not need a dual income household is still <laughs> It is because I came from a household like like where they were just having kids is just what you like. Like I, oh, it's I just do not under I just I I hate nepo babies with every fiber of my being, and I think part of the reason I hate nepo babies as much as I do is because um, my parents as parents I think raised them to be to like not expect handouts and shit and they're passing that shit, yeah. shit on to us but like I don't know like I'm I don't have a phone right now because I couldn't I don't have enough money to afford my phone bill so and, and I got cut my mom mm. said we're not helping you because it's not because we think you need you you need we need you to help yourself and I'm like awesome love that I don't know. Whatever it is, uh, that was a rancid ass video, and uh, my life is now worth for having watched it. Awesome. Awesome.